Hey, it's the Black Korean, Nancy Marie. I am back in Houston after a year of, I have to remember to look at the camera, after a year of uh, living and teaching English in South Korea and a few days in New York, I am back. And I have rested and I have regained my energy, so I am have been really preparing for my next steps and uh, decided it was time to update my page with um, answers to a lot of questions that I'm receiving and uh, so I'm going to answer all the questions that I have up to date and it'll probably take about three videos after that I'm going to do some videos about my overall experience in Korea what I learned uh, the things that I miss or don't miss um, you know even my vacation I want to do a review on the bed and breakfast that I stayed at it was my first bed and breakfast ever it was also my first time in New York and I have lots of good things to say I'm very pleased so I'm also going to do a review on that and then I will go into some videos about my personal journey the spiritual financial health stuff that I've been talking about for some time now so it'll probably take me two maybe three days to get all these videos in order but they are coming in they will all be downloaded this week. Yay! So, first question. I have gotten this question a lot. What is it like being an African American or African American woman in South Korea? The best way to, to make it simple and short, being an African American and African American woman in South Korea is like being an African American woman in, in the USA or anywhere else in the world. Um, you may get stares and you may get people who look as if, you know, they, they act as if your color is going to, you know, rub off on them if they sit too close to you. You'll get a lot of questions. But after people begin to see you on a regular basis um, and see your confidence, you must be very confident. Uh, see your confidence and your kindness they warm up to you and if they don't oh well that's their loss um, I did I've had stares I've had people say all kinds of things I've had um, you know people literally will go out their way on like the bus or the subway not to sit by me it could be the only em empty seat and they will stand and another seat will come open and then they'll go sit there you know so I've I've had it all. I've had all the questions that I've had since I was a kid growing up in, you know, Cyprus, Texas. So I think I'm used to it and I didn't let it get to me. That's the most important thing. Do not allow it to get to you. Understand that this is a naturally homogeneous society. They're used to just them. So keep that in mind. Don't let anyone disrespect you, but keep that in mind. And be a little open when, when you're asked questions. If you don't feel that's an appropriate question or, you know, you just don't want to answer, you know, politely let them know or move on to another conversation. But questions that I've received on a regular basis, um, of course, we always get asked about our hair. So I've, I've answered a few hair questions and skin questions. Um, why don't you wear, you know, the visor and the umbrella and all the stuff on your hands. Yes, African Americans also need to be careful in the sun, but our skin, sun, blah, 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 our skin, um, you know, is more protected because of, you know, the color in there. So, um, I've answered all kinds of questions about the food we eat, about, you know, all kinds of stuff. And some questions, I, I'll answer them, and there's some I won't answer, but definitely be confident and be kind and represent us well and you'll be fine it's nothing that you can't get over um, I actually have a friend who went through a very I don't even think there's a word for what she went through because of her race um, when she first got here she overcame it God blessed her with an even better job with better pay better apartment and she recently finished her year so nothing that you can that you can go through here or in Korea 
is too much. Don't be overwhelmed or feel fearful. You know, just be confident and strong and, and kind and you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Um, the next question I got was about maintaining my hair. I would say keep it simple. I lived in Yoju, South Korea, which was in the boonies in the country. So I was at least two hours from everything. And when it came to getting my hair done, most of the people who do hair, who do black hair are in Seoul um, and some other places that are far from Yoju. So the easiest thing for me was to do my own hair. I experimented with my own hair. When I first got there, I was doing my own relaxers, deep conditioners. Um, then I transition to natural so I started experimenting with different styles and one that I would always wear I part my hair and I would twist it and hair pin it and um, I did all my washes all my deep conditions and then towards the end I went to Taiwan and had someone break, twist my hair so I, I, I did that but I would say keep it simple something you don't have to do too much to if you're in Seoul then you may have a few more options you know you may have um, more easier access to the black hairstylist and that type of thing I um, also did a sew-in when I came home for 10 days in May and I wore that for a while I didn't feel comfortable getting a sew-in um, or relaxers by any of the hairstylists I have been presented with in Korea I wasn't impressed it's just that simple I wasn't impressed I didn't let them in my hair the only person that I ever went to to get it um, do anything to my hair was the lady Nelly who did my twist and um, I went to a lady named Naomi at Yuna Day Salon E-U-H-N-A if you get on www.koreaforexpats.com, you will actually find a link to Yuna Salon. I think. But I only went to her for a trim. She tried to style it, but since I was going natural, she didn't know how to work with it. So if, if you are not natural, if you're relaxed or whatever, and or you just want to trim, I would say you can try that too. I also did a scalp treatment that was pretty good. Um, so yeah, that's how I maintained my hair. It wasn't too bad towards the end. I was getting a little frustrated. So um, my housing, what was your housing like? I had, in my opinion, very, very good housing. I stayed in Intel Zone Office Tell in Yoju. And it's basically a huge office building. And you know there you'll see different businesses in there they have their offices in this building um, it was also convenient they had like a little convenience store in the apartments and on the very tops are all the apartments and I had a one bedroom it's not really a one bedroom I had a studio apartment and I loved it it was just me it was enough room I could see the river and the mountains from my apartment it was a newer building as well so I was very happy, especially when I saw some other people's um, apartments. I was very, I felt very blessed. I liked my apartment and it was, um, you know, I was on the eighth floor, but they had the elevator, so it was convenient. No dishwasher, which a lot of the, uh, the apartments don't have, but no dishwasher. I had a washing machine and dryer in one, um, drying rack. I didn't have an oven. But other than that, I mean, it was great. I liked it. And if you go through a recruiter, which I do suggest your first time, you have better chances of having a really nice, really up-to-date apartment. They usually go out their way to make sure you have nice living arrangements that are somewhat similar to the states or wherever you're coming from. So, yeah, my housing was, was really pretty good. And I only have 30 seconds left. I was going to try to answer one more question, but I'll do it on the next video. Hope this helped. Bye.